Hello Steelers and welcome to another Bench Report Hobby Update and I've got some very exciting Chain of Command news for you later on uh, so stick around and I'll tell you what that is when I have uh, told you all about what I've painted and what I've bought and also what I've played this week as well so just stick around and you'll hear some exciting news first of all though I went back to Warlord's epic scale f uh, figures and I went back to the Waterloo box set and this is the 1st Battalion of the 10th Infantry Line Regiment uh, for Napoleon, obviously. I painted the entire sprue of these, so I also did the artillery and the voltageurs and the ADC or commander, whichever rule set you're using. So uh, I just decided I, I, I'm going to paint the entire sprue, so I finished these off pretty much in one over the week uh, just jabbed away some i'm really really enjoying the uh, painting the epic warlord stuff again uh, because of those glasses that i bought recently i talked about them in previous hobby updates but they're the magnifying glasses that i got from uh, amazon i will put a link again once again down below uh, and i do recommend them massively they've really really changed my painting uh, just my painting enjoyment really as much as anything else I also as well very quickly turned out a couple of well uh, uh, 10 of these Japanese bunkers these were given me to be my Mike we uh, uh, Wilkins also known as Cake Weaver over on Twitter or X or whatever Elon Musk is calling it these days these are just some little Japanese spider holes I think these are from 3D Breed uh, these are printable you can get the STLs he had the STLs he just printed me some along with some of the other bits and pieces he gave me over at uh, Lard Workshop a couple of weeks ago so I thought I'd just get these done very nice very easy they'll be very useful for late war Japanese games which I, uh, I think I'm intending on playing at some point probably with decks at some point in the future uh, pushing that Far East handbook as far as it can go uh, this week has been relatively quiet because uh, both myself and my wife took a week off work. Uh, I had some time to use up and she also had some leave to use up as well before the end of her year comes through. So we thought we'd take off some time and just have a relaxing time. Uh, what this meant was over on uh, Wednesday we went over to Leeds uh, to have a look at the art gallery there, particularly for, I think it's a Pete Wilson, or I can't remember his name, uh, photography exhibition, which was really, really good. But what I didn't realise is that at the exhibition uh, in the permanent display, they also have the original of Lady Jane Butler's Scotland Forever painting of the uh, the Scots Greys charging at Waterloo. And that was a real treat to see. I've never seen it. I was actually quite surprised at how small it is. Uh, but it is quite a small painting, but it's a brilliant painting. Tons and tons of detail on there. So I was looking at that just for ages, really. Uh, something to go and check out if you are in Leeds. The gallery is free, so do go and check it out. I also, as well, bought... The only thing I did buy was this, is a print of it. Uh, because I don't have a print of it, and it is one of my favourite paintings. Uh, this is an A3 size one. You can get the uh, frames at the gallery itself. However, I didn't because the uh, the painting was, well, the print was nine quid, the frame was about 28 quid. And I thought I could probably actually get this properly bespoke framed myself uh, for cheaper than that, uh, or even just buy, you know, an A3 frame somewhere online. So I didn't do that, but I, I've got the print. I will get that framed up and that'll go up in the war room at some point when <laughs> all the decorating and everything is done. So that's really all I bought this week. As I say, because I've got so much other stuff at the moment to work my way through with Vietnam and also with the epic ranges of uh, the, the, the the Warlord stuff, I really just cannot get any uh, anything else at the moment. I'm trying trying my best not to buy things. So uh, this week, I, uh, last weekend, uh, I was I mentioned it in last in the last hobby update. I was going to play a game of uh, General Darmé Two as well. I just didn't get round to that. Uh, I didn't have I didn't feel confident enough with the rules. I need to sit down and reread them because I've not read them for a while and I've not played it for a while. We played it at the club uh, ages ago, so I've not played it for such a long time that I can't really remember the rules. I didn't just want to rush into it, so I'm going to sit down and read the rules. But I think I've got enough, as I say, from the Warlord stuff, really, if I just use half battalions to actually play a game of it. I'd need to, you know, uh, paint full battalions, obviously, at some point, but it would be just nice to get some half battalions, at least, on the table and just get a game played of it, really. So that's something I'm going to do in the future. 
So I did, I did play the Vietnam uh, Chain of Command version. This is not the DMZ version that uh, a lot of people seem to think it was when I posted pictures of it last week. This was John Savage's version of it, which borrows very heavily from the Far East Handbook. I did also film this, so I'm not going to tell you how it turned out, but it was a really good game, really enjoyed it. Very different to normal Chain of Command. There was, you know, a few extra bits and pieces here with the, uh, the VC having various uh, national characteristics and the US also having characteristics as well. They had tons of firepower, but obviously were not as good as uh, gr good as troops as the VC. But the VC had a lot more sneaky tricks that they could do uh, with uh, just literally most of it lifted out of the Far East handbook with a few little tweaks here and there. John, as you know, wrote What a Cowboy which is a great game, I really like it anyway, uh, and he's, uh, he's, he's very good at developing things from existing rules, and he's done this quite a few times, uh, even with Infamy Infamy, I think was, was very early on, was a John idea uh, at doing some you know, asymmetric warfare in the, uh, the Roman age, so I think even things like that have kind of influenced games later. This week at the club, uh, Dex and I sat down and played scenario two of the Driving Charge pint-sized campaign in Jitra. Uh, this is the second scenario that we played. Uh, the first one was quite a while ago, so it's been a little while. We had a break doing other things. Uh, but this was a terrific game. I was on the top of it. Uh, from the start, I was really pushing forward with my Japanese to capture the, uh, the roadblock, uh, Nanka. Uh, his Punjabs. Uh, were nowhere to be seen for ages and I was making great grounds and I even captured one of his jumping off points fairly early on as well as I was pushing up into the jungle but then all of a sudden he just suddenly appeared and unfortunately my Japanese could not get past his uh, the remaining men of his, his Punjabs even though I was giving them some hammer. Uh, Dex has done a fantastic write-up over on the Chain of Command uh, Facebook group so go and check that out, go and have a look at that uh, because he's He's said a lot more in that than I can actually remember uh, from uh, from my point of view. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was a really good game. Um, I absolutely had my arse handed to me because I made a stupid mistake of not attacking. Uh, well, a close assault in, but not when the enemy were pinned. And that was it's it's my cardinal rule: never ever close assault in chain of command unless the enemy is pinned. And it completely and utterly battered two sections of mine. I was up against four men, uh, but two sections got broken and pushed right back to their start line. And from that point, I was just like, this is game over. We're going to go back to that scenario because we have to play it again. I'm thinking what I might do is I might wait a campaign turn. So I play uh, instead of down the table, I play across it. That's the difference with it. Uh, it does delay me a little bit, but I also, I think I can something like, I had 10 points of support in this one but I'm going to have 18, I think, in the next one. So there are going to be a few tanks because they've repaired the bridge uh, a little further down the road at Changlun. So we'll be able to bring some tanks up. So we'll see what happens with that. But that'll be very interesting. Uh, I took heavy casualties, 12 men, uh, KIA, well, 12, uh, 12 casualties, of which six were KIA. Uh, so I'm getting quite battered with my platoon at the moment, but we'll see how it goes with the next one. Right, so you stuck around for long enough. Uh, this is the Chain of Command news. I was speaking to Rich from Two Fat Lardies just the other day, uh, and he has sanctioned me to say this. Uh, this weekend is Ebor Lard, and he is actually going to be showcasing Chain of Command version 2. Now, I know a lot of people have been desperate for this for several years now. The uh, frequently asked questions and errata have been up for ages, and the game just hasn't been updated for such a long time. And I know that Rich has been working on a version 2 for a while, and as I say, he is publicly unveiling it this weekend. So this is a bit of a scoop for you. I did press him for uh, a date for release, but he was not forthcoming. So basically you're going to have to sit here and just wait a little while longer, but I promise you it is coming uh, and it will be, hopefully it will be soon, fingers crossed. Uh, I'm obviously I'm massively looking forward to it uh, and uh, as soon as I'm able to I will uh, I'll try and prize a, a copy, a review copy, or at least out of, out of his hands for you, so we can go through it and see what any changes are, or how the new rules look and things. And I just think, yeah, it's, um, it's something I'm very excited about. And as I say, there's going to be some very lucky players this weekend playing the second version of Chain of Command. 
he said tight lips sink ships no loose lips sink ships so uh he's uh he's certainly keeping mum in the uh the, the world war ii fashion uh, so he wouldn't let me know when it was going to be released but it is coming so just keep an eye out for that and uh, there you go there's a the scoop so very exciting news right i will wrap up there uh basically uh if you are buying anything from warlord as always please do use that warlord affiliate link that i've got down in the description down below uh, and also if you haven't please do subscribe because most people watching these videos haven't subscribed to the channel so please do and also give me a like as well and if so if you like this video please do leave a comment and i'll see you in the next storm of steel video